thank you for being with us today to witness this memorable chapter in Jamaica-US relations. The historic meeting held today with the Honorable Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, sends a positive signal of the strong bilateral relationship that exists between Jamaica and the United States of America. These relations are anchored in our strong democratic traditions and the historical and cultural bonds that unite our peoples. The importance of, to Jamaica of our relations with the United States of America must be clearly understood. The USA is Jamaica's leading trading partner, main tourism market, and a chief source of foreign direct investment. The USA is home to the largest Jamaican diaspora. The main aim of our dialogue, therefore, was to further strengthen a partnership that existed long before the formal establishment of diplomatic relations in 1962. During our bilateral meeting, I renewed the high levels of regard which Jamaica has for the United States of America. I also expressed to President Obama and the government of the United States on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica our gratitude for the high levels of support provided by the United States to Jamaica over the years. Central to our discussions were the elements of Jamaica's performance under the current extended fund facility with the IMF and the positive outlook for the future. As Jamaica builds on the gains made so far under the program with the fund, we recognize that we renew our commitment to the economic reform program going forward. We also discussed strengthening our cooperation in the areas of security and human resource development. We explored additional ways of improving our trade and economic relations, including through capacity building for our private sector, as well as in the areas of energy security and renewable energy. One of the outcomes of the President's visit is the signing by our respective ministers of energy of a statement of intent between Jamaica and the United States of America to pursue the development and deployment of energy-related technologies. And I want to thank you, Mr. President, so much and your government. Through this statement of intent, we aim to encourage increased bilateral trade, boost the development of emerging technologies and industries, and pave the way for future innovation in energy-related fields. Other areas of our deliberations centered on regional and hemispheric developments, uh, including relations with our closest neighbor, Cuba, and our expectations for the Summit of the Americas. And here again, I want to thank the President of the United States for action taken in terms of Cuba and to say to the President, we're very happy. And to say to you, Mr. President, you are on the right side of history. The President and I and our teams also use the opportunity to have brief exchanges on multilateral development issues. And he has some serious concern as well as Jamaica in terms of climate change uh, and financing for development and post-15 development uh, agenda. Uh, I want to once again thank you, Mr. President, for visiting with us. And I just want to say to you, you might not know, but you're very loved in this country, Jamaica. And I just want to indicate to you that last night to Isla, I was getting back home, 
the streets people had lined the streets. And the route they thought that you would be driving last night. <laughs> so I had to give all the ways for you and blow the kisses to, the, to the, all the people that were out at that time, just waiting to get a glimpse of your vehicle. So I just want to say you're, you're well loved in Jamaica. Well, first of all, I can say to you publicly, I love you and uh, ask for you to pass on my best wishes to your beautiful wife. And I'm sorry she was not able to make the, this visit with you, but to thank you so much. And you might not understand how important this is for us as a country, and certainly will be important for our CARICOM region. And I thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just first of all say it is a, an extraordinary pleasure to be in beautiful Jamaica. Uh, there is a long history between uh, our two peoples. Uh, it is not just uh, a deep friendship between states, but it is also uh, a family bond mm -hmm. that exists, uh, as represented by uh, the many Americans who uh, come here to, to visit and enjoy Jamaican hospitality, but also uh, the extraordinary Jamaican-American community uh, that has done so much to contribute to the growth uh, and development uh, of our country. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller for uh, her hospitality uh, and her team. Uh, I know it's always a lot of work uh, when I come to visit someplace, and uh, I think that uh, everybody has treated us uh, with uh, uh, wonderful hospitality. We very, very much appreciate that. Uh, I assure you that Michelle wishes she was on this trip, uh, although she would insist that I stay longer than one day. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll have to uh, return uh, with the girls uh, sometime in the future. Um, the, uh, she, she would also applaud for that. Uh, as Madam Prime Minister indicated, uh, we had a lot to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, we uh, discussed how much uh, we support the ongoing uh, reform efforts in Jamaica uh, to uh, deal with its uh, public debt while still making investments in youth and uh, the people of Jamaica, which uh, ultimately will determine long-term growth uh, to strengthen good governance uh, and rule of law. And uh, I want to thank uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Simpson Miller for the, the hospitality when the CARICOM leaders come today. Uh, many of the issues that Jamaica deals with uh, are issues that uh, exist across uh, the Caribbean. Uh, and so what we want to do is find out how we can be an even more constructive partner uh, in addressing some of these issues. Uh, one area that we've spent a lot of time focusing on and we'll discuss further with the other CARICOM leaders is the area of energy, where uh, oftentimes uh, people of the Caribbean, uh, despite uh, having less resources, are paying significantly higher prices for energy. And if we can lower those costs through the development of clean energy uh, and increased energy efficiency, uh, we could unleash, I think, a whole host of additional investment uh, and growth. Uh, and I think there are going to be a whole host of areas where the United States can be helpful. Uh, we also address the issue of climate change, which obviously many island nations are most concerned about. Uh, and we have an uh, important conference in Paris later this year. Uh, uh, we began to discuss how we can uh, cooperate further to deal with this issue that will affect generations of uh, Jamaicans and Americans for years to come. Uh, we spent time talking about trade and how we can expand uh, trade in the region and internationally. Uh, and we spent a lot of time talking about young people, because one of the best ways to uh, ensure growth and prosperity uh, is by empowering more of our citizens. Uh, today's town hall meeting that I'll be having with young people uh, from the region, uh, we're going to be discussing how we can support entrepreneurship, more student exchanges more effective uh, job training, and at the same time, how we can support human rights 
uh, equality and the dignity of all people. Uh, and finally, we spent some time talking about security cooperation. Uh, you know, Jamaica historically has had a very capable uh, uh, security uh, effort, but uh, strains are being placed on Jamaica, just like uh, is true across the Caribbean, uh, as the transnational drug trade continues to make uh, moves to, to try to expand its reach or where it feels displaced uh, from other areas. And so uh, strengthening our cooperation, uh, making sure that training, equipment, uh, coordination, uh, intelligence, uh, that we are uh, in sync, I think is going to be very important. And I look forward to uh, our efforts there as well. So uh, in summary, uh, it's been an excellent uh, discussion. And I want to thank uh, the people of Jamaica for their outstanding hospitality. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, you know, the, the quick trip that I made last night uh, to Bob Marley's house was one of the uh, more fun uh, uh, meetings that I've had uh, since I've been president uh, as a big fan since I was in high school. Uh, and uh, is indicative of the incredible spirit of the Jamaican people. So thank you very much, uh, Madam Prime Minister. And, and uh, with that, I know we're going to take uh, uh, oh, yes. a question from each delegation. Oh, yes. Can we, uh, Mr. Earl Maxim? Yes. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, Earl Maxim of the Irish Communications Group, including Jamaica and Jamaica and Greater Jamaica. Uh, Prime Minister, did you uh, explore with President Obama uh, some of the measures that might be uh, pursued to ensure that Jamaica does not suffer any negative consequences from that which it has long advocated, the easing and ultimate lifting of the, of the American embargo on Cuba? And furthermore, uh, are there going to be any specific new measures in Extending the flow of American guns into Jamaica, which has negative Well, we, as the president indicated, we discussed national security, and you know, all of those th that would be included in the discussion in terms of our national security. Um, both the U.S. and Jamaica, we're very concerned. Uh, the United States of America would not want for illegal guns to be entering our airports or seaports or by any other means. And in the same way, Jamaica would not want to have guns coming into our country, illegal guns coming into our country. And um, we've always been united against guns, illegal weapons um, entering our country in coming from any other country. So uh, there's no need for us to, to worry about that, only to continue our serious monitoring of our borders, our airports, and our seaports. But I was very satisfied with the discussion that I had in that era with the president. Okay. Julie Davis. Thank you. Mr. President, is it your view that it's time for Cuba to and beyond that, if I might, um, how confident are you that you're going to be able to push forward with this opening with Cuba at the same time that you are trying to make the case for the nuclear deal with Iran? As you know, there's a process involved in reviewing uh, whether or not a country should be on the state sponsor of terrorism list. Uh, that review has been completed at the State Department. It is now forwarded to the White House. Our interagency team will go through the entire thing and then present it to me uh, with a recommendation. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, the one thing I will say is uh, that throughout this process, our emphasis has been on the facts. Uh, so uh, we want to make sure that, given that this is a powerful tool to isolate those countries that genuinely do support terrorism, that uh, when we make those designations, uh, we've got uh, strong evidence that, in fact, that's the case. And as circumstances change, then uh, that list will change as well. Uh, so I won't make a formal announcement 
today about what those recommendations are. I'll wait until I've uh, received them. Uh, in terms of the overall uh, process of uh, you know, establishing diplomatic relations with Cuba, uh, I think that they are proceeding as I expected. Uh, I never uh, foresaw that uh, immediately overnight uh, everything would uh, transform itself, uh, that suddenly Cuba became um, uh, a partner diplomatically with us uh, the way uh, Jamaica is, for example. Uh, that's going to take some time. Uh, I do think that we'll be in a position uh, to move forward on the opening of embassies in respective countries. Uh, there are details and negotiations around that. Uh, uh, Cuba uh, has moved forward uh, in the negotiations that they've had with our State Department. Uh, consistent with uh, what we announced back in December. Uh, and so my expectation is, is that during the course of this year and into next year, you'll see a series of steps and measures that are taken to build trust and to establish uh, genuine dialogue. Uh, there will still be significant differences given their system of government, uh, given uh, you know, their positions on uh, some of the issues in the region, uh, but uh, we're confident that this process of engagement uh, will ultimately lead to not just improved relations between the United States and Cuba, but will also uh, end up being beneficial for the Cuban people uh, and give them the kinds of opportunities that they might not have in the past. I, there was an interesting poll uh, that was released uh, uh, just over the last several days showing uh, overwhelming support within Cuba uh, for this process. I think there is a great interest among ordinary Cubans. Uh, to be able to uh, uh, put uh, one era behind them and to be able to uh, move forward uh, and have the kinds of relationships with uh, the United States and the rest of the world that uh, uh, is reflective of the fact that we have an integrated 21st century global economy uh, and that they have to be a part of it. Uh, I don't think that will have an impact on Iran. I think people recognize those are two separate issues. Um, you know, the issue with respect to Iran uh, is very focused on uh, a particular problem, and that is making sure that Iran doesn't possess nuclear weapons and that the Middle East uh, doesn't embark on a nuclear arms race. Uh, that's in everybody's interest. Uh, as I said before, I'm confident that the framework that was established, uh, thanks to the hard work of our negotiating team and serious concessions on the part of uh, the Iranians, uh, and the unity of the P5 plus 1 in the world community behind sanctions all give us now the possibility of achieving our goal uh, without uh, potential military conflict. Uh, but uh, as I've said from the start, this is not done until it's done. And the next two to three months of negotiations are going to be absolutely critical for making sure that we are memorializing uh, an agreement that gives us confidence and gives the world confidence that Iran, in fact, is not pursuing uh, a nuclear weapon. Uh, if that is the case, then Iran, I think, will benefit from uh, uh, its economy being open to uh, the global economy. And uh, ultimately, what we want to see is prosperity for the Iranian people. Uh, but we also want to make sure that our allies in the region uh, have confidence that they're not going to be threatened uh, by uh, the looming cloud of a nuclear Iran. Uh, and uh, we're going to make sure that that happens, hopefully, through diplomatic means. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.